Hey guys and welcome back to the channel where today I got some pretty great Star Wars Battlefront 2 news for you all that I'm pretty sure almost every fan of the game is going to be very excited for. Just this morning the community transmission for the rest of August and September was released giving us a look at all the content that is to come as well as a roadmap that gives us little sneak peeks into what lies in the future for Battlefront 2. I read through most of the content that is to come to the game and personally I'm very excited for it and there's actually a lot of news that was released so let's not waste any time and hop right into it. The first little bit of news pertains to the Venator and Dreadnought, where in August we're going to be getting an update where the Separatist Dreadnought and Republic Venator become playable in Heroes vs. Villains. Since the release of Capital Supremacy, this edition has been highly requested from me and a lot of actual fans that would like to see more of these maps, especially new kinds of maps like the Venator and Dreadnought that could be added to Heroes vs. Villains, which is why I'm very excited about this. The next little bit of content that we have coming to the game is going to be changes to the interior of the Capital ships. They say that the assault on the capital ship will continue to have two subphases, but both are going to be evolving. Once you're breached to the enemy ship, you have five minutes to destroy it before the action returns back to the ground. In order to destroy the capital ship, you must capture command posts located on the ship. If you succeed in that, your team will gain an additional five minutes to be able to fire on the enemy target. This little update I'm actually quite excited about because in playing Capital Supremacy that I actually play quite often, I find that the ship phase is actually quite short compared to the overall aspect of that game mode. I find that the ground phase usually lasts like a decent bit of time, but once you get to the ship, it's quite easy just to get to that next point and the next point to finally end the game. So instead of having, I think it was like 100 to 150 targets you have to destroy before going back to the ground for like the team that is defending their ship, you now have only 5 minutes to destroy your enemy ship. And if you take the first point, then you get an additional 5 minutes, which is something I'm actually very excited to see how it works. They also add that any damage caused to the target will be persistent, meaning if you even fail like to destroy the ship, like what happens quite often, when you go back to the ship the next round, yeah, your damage will still be there. In following the trend of the updates coming to Capital Supremacy, we also have a contextual spawn update coming. Now I know personally this update has been highly requested and is very beloved in the original Battlefront 2 game that came out in 2005. This basically means once you've been defeated in the game, like when you're just playing and you die, whatever, you can now have the same spawn menu as before where you can spawn alongside your squad members, but you will also be allowed to spawn at certain command posts that your team actually has. If you guys can remember back to the 2005 Battlefront where you can spawn at certain command points so you can easily like tactically position yourself to take on another command post, this is coming to the game and it's something I'm actually very excited for. Because I find when you're trying to spawn on your teammates, most of them are either dead or like in action so you can't spawn on them. And if you just default spawn, you're like 2,000 miles away from the next command post. So it just takes a while to get there and it just takes out of the fun of the game. Now moving away from the Capital Supremacy aspect of this update, we're moving on to Droid Appearances. Now this is an update that I've actually been excited for and been wanting since we got news of the Clone Trooper appearances coming to the game. I always thought that we should get some droids as well, you know, mix it up so both sides have kind of customization that you can choose for your team. So the first droid appearance that they mention in the update is actually the droid pilot where it has kind of like a blue decal. It kind of looks like what a 501st Trooper would look like but instead for the droids. It's got blue markings on the head of it and the body, and it looks actually really cool. The second appearance that will be coming for the droids is the Jungle Droid, where it has kind of like the Jungle 41st kind of nostalgic look to it, which actually looks pretty neat. It's got like the green across the face, the green across the body and stripes, and I'm very excited to use this on Kashyyyk and maps with jungles, especially Felucia that will be coming out soon. And the final droid appearance that will be coming is the training droid. It has kind of like a little marking on its face that indicates like where you should shoot. And it kind of looks like the droids that they used on Kamido for training when the clone troopers are doing their training and trying to get to the next level and pass the test. It kind of looks like those droids that they use in like that citadel place. Now there's not that many appearances for the droids like the clones, but then there's not much you could really do for it. I'm excited and very happy with the ones we are getting. So now let's move on to the next aspect of this update. Now the rest of the update that I'm going to be talking about right now is going to be coming in September and most of this content I'm actually very, very excited for. The first part of the update that they talk about that is coming in September is going to be the new map Felucia. Now the Felucia map will be coming to Battlefront 2 for the modes such as Galactic Assault and Capital Supremacy. As far as Capital Supremacy goes, you guys already know how it's going to work. You're going to have each command post, go to the Venator or go to the Dreadnought, it's going to be that basically. But for Galactic Assault, it's actually going to be the Separatist Invasion of Felucia. 
With only a single, powerful vehicle left to cover the evacuation of a Felucian farming community, the clones struggled to maintain their last line of defense long enough for the Republic Transport to collect a large cache of valuable mechanicals and plants from the village. As the droids advance towards the clones' positions, the squad chooses to go on the offensive, destroying the dreadnought responsible for their attack. However, the droids have a plan of their own to ensure the Republic can escape with the plants by bringing down their Venator. This map is kind of sounding like what happens with Kashyyyk, where the droids have to stop the Venator from leaving Kashyyyk, and the clones just have to stop the droids from advancing. So I'm actually very excited for it because it looks like such a beautiful map from the Clone Wars TV show. Just seeing like Ahsoka fighting there, we also saw it in Revenge of the Sith with Ayla Secura, and I'm very excited to see what they can do with this map. At the end of the news, they also add that Felucia has been built from the ground up with capital supremacy in mind and is shaping up to be one of the best looking planets they've ever built to date. Now just hearing that little bit at the end, how it's going to be looking like the best one they've ever built, has me so excited for this map, and it's something I've been wanting since the game actually came out. Because back in the 2005 Battlefront, Felucia was probably one of my favorite maps that we had to play on, so I'm very excited to see how it looks with the new graphics. Now the next bit of news that will be coming in September is actually the co-op. So in September, 4-player online co-op is coming to Battlefront. For this experience, you will team up with 3 other players, old friends or new, which is something that I really enjoy because I play with a lot of friends and not always like playing online is something we want to do. So having like an offline, just cooperative thing that only like the 4 of us can do is something that I'm actually very excited for. Now in this game mode, you will team up with like 3 players to go for a large-scale PvE adventure. You can choose to play as either the Galactic Republic or the Separatist Alliance to partake in a massive battle of all 5 Clone Wars planets in the Battlefront 2. So it's looking like this PvE mode that co-op is coming is only going to be for the Clone Wars maps, which I know is something that not a lot of people are going to be happy with. Because I know a lot of people, including a lot of my friends, who are kind of getting sick of the Clone Wars content and want some more like original trilogy content and want some more sequel content to come to the game, such as like maps from the original trilogy to come to game modes such as Capital Supremacy. So now that we're getting like a cooperative game mode that has all the prequel content in it, I'm actually quite excited for. But at the same time, I know myself and a lot of other people are going to be kind of disappointed that there's not that much original trilogy content. But I have a feeling that a lot of OT content is going to be coming in the future, so that's why I have hope. They also add that depending on what faction you actually choose, the experience on each planet will be different. For example, the joint army will be invading the planet of Naboo while defending if you play as the clone army for the Republic. So it's kind of like a galactic assault feel to it. So moving on from the cooperative aspect of the update that's coming, we now have instant action, which is something I am so excited for. Instant action is probably one of my favorite aspects of the original 2005 Battlefront game that I've been wanting in this game for so long now. To have like that offline option where you can choose how you want to attack just solo when you don't have like Wi-Fi let's say. So you just want to play by yourself and not have like the whole online aspect to it. I'm very excited for this update. They add that they know that the solo players matter to the game and they can confirm it's real and it's arriving in September. Now this is something I'm very excited for to have the Battlefront community and the Battlefront devs actually looking at the game in the aspect that they can help players who don't want to play online and just want to play like solo with themselves and it's a good thing that they're looking at this aspect of the game. It's going to be single player large scale combat experience, you can fight to control command posts, you can fight alongside the AI, your fight against a team of AI, enemy team will be made up of regular troops, reinforcements, heroes, vehicles, it's basically like an online game but against AI and on offline. The update that's coming this month of August with the contextual spawn system will also be coming to instant action in the offline game mode. At the release of instant action, you will have access to all maps that are currently available within Capital Supremacy, such as Naboo, Kamino, Kashyyyk, Geonosis, and Felucia. I'm guessing that in the later months to come after this update rolls out, once they have the more original trilogy content added, that they'll probably add it to the game modes such as Capital Supremacy and in turn also adding it to instant action. So for all you guys who want the original trilogy content, uh, hold out, it will eventually come and they just need more time. Now this next part of the update is something that I've been wanting for a while and it's something that I've actually guessed would be coming in this transmission and that is Clone Commando as a reinforcement. As one of the most elite forces within the Grand Army of the Republic, the Clone Commandos would come to be respected uh, by allies, feared by enemies. With conflict raging across the galaxy, the Republic organized the commandos into squads who quickly become pivotal resources in the ongoing war effort against the Separatists. Now if we take a closer look into that little bit of information we got there, they added that Republic organized the commandos into squads. 
Now, when they say Commando Squads, that could be a hint into clone customizations coming for the Commandos. This could mean we can get customizations such as Sev, Scorch, Fixer, Boss, all the clone Commandos that were in the Republic Commando game, which is something that I'd really like to see come to this game. Republic Commandos was actually one of my favorite games playing growing up, and if I was able to play as Sev, let's say, in the new Battlefront 2 game, I'm going to be very hyped. Now, I was talking with a bunch of my friends that I play this game with, and we had a cool little idea where you spawn as a clone commando, and you only have the ability to spawn as four, that's your max for spawn, and each of them will be different, such as if you spawn in randomly, you could get Sev, and the other three could be Fixer, Boss, Scorch. That's just like a little something that we talked about that we thought could be pretty cool. Now, I doubt that I'll actually come to the game, but if we do get commando skins, that would be really sick. Now, the commandos will have an ability to switch from blaster to grenade to help them provide the commandos with a great deal of versatility, allowing them to adapt to the situations ahead of them. Now, the clone commando's primary weapon is obviously going to be the DC-17M, which what they had in the original Star Wars Republic Commando game, which is something I'm actually very happy they kept for this game. Their left ability will be anti-armor attachment, uh, reconfigures the DC-17 into a grenade launch that fires up to three small grenades with high efficiency against vehicles and shields. Now that's something I'm actually really happy about, and in reading this ability makes me even more happier, because in the original update we got the clone arc trooper, and then to combat it, to go on the other side to level it out, you had the droid commandos. But then they added the droidica, and now it kind of feels when you're playing like Galactic Assault or Capital Supremacy, that the droid side of the game actually has a higher advantage because of the droidica. You know, they're harder to take out, and they don't really have that opposite added uh, reinforcement to help level out the game. Now, hearing that they have this anti-vehicle, anti-shield ability with their left arm is something I'm very excited about because it's something that can help level out the playing field for the droidicas so that the game feels more balanced. Now, their right ability will be a repulsor blaster that discharges a short-range shockwave that temporarily... Uh, disorients enemies and shocks them backwards, which is something that I'm actually very excited to see how it works in the game. And their final middle ability will be Battle Focus. It activates a damage protection aura for the commandos and nearby allies. Additionally, any damage the commando deals to enemies replenishes his base health. This ability sounds really cool because it makes the commando seem more of a kind of support for your squad where they can heal them and you can actually heal yourself by destroying enemies and it's something I'm actually very excited to see how it works in the game and the kind of dynamics you can play with your squad to help each other out. Most of this content that I'm reading about kind of seems like it pertains towards kind of like the more cooperative aspect of the game and they're kind of making updates that can help you play with people better and you can better organize yourself in squads with your friends and have like a more enjoyable time playing the game which is something I'm very happy that they're doing. Now also coming to the game is going to be an appearance challenge where during September they're going to be releasing community challenges that grants them the ability to unlock highly request appearances. Now they don't give us a list of the actual skins that will be coming to the game. All of that information will be released when it gets closer to this time challenge but they do add that as a sneak peek, fans of Luke Skywalker and Star Wars A New Hope will enjoy this. Now that could mean a possibility of farm boy Luke in his kind of like beige outfit on Tatooine, or we can also get the pilot skin that was actually teased a couple months ago that I added in the video. Both of these skins, I'm actually very excited to see implemented to the game. Whichever one it is, I'm going to be happy either way. And I know this challenge is going to make a lot of players out there who haven't been so happy with this community transmission a lot more happier. Because I have a couple of friends who don't like playing Galactic Assault and don't like playing Capital Supremacy because it doesn't have like the original trilogy aspect to it. But adding skins that will help pertain to modes like Heroes vs. Villains that they like to play is something I'm very happy that they're going to add. Now that's it for like the definite news part of the update. The next part they talk about is going to be looking onwards beyond August, beyond September, into like November, October, December-ish, where they don't give us the exact updates that are coming to the game, but kind of like a sneak peek of the content we can see coming to the game. Now as they move uh, through the remainder of the year, we will have new reinforcements, appearances, a brand new front menu system, which allows you to play the area of your choice. Now in that little aspect of news, we can see that later in the year we'll get more reinforcements, maybe not only for like the clones and not only for the separatists, but maybe for like the rebellion, the empire, the first order, or maybe even the resistance. Now this could hint more towards the original trilogy aspect of the game where they can add more content for that area, which is something I know a lot of fans are going to be very excited for. 
they also add new appearances so that could also be for the original trilogy or maybe new appearances for more of the hero aspect of the game they will also be working towards the release of the content inspired by star wars the rise of skywalker now the content that relates to the rise of skywalker will most definitely come i want to say early january so they have a time to actually implement all the new skins or maybe even heroes that could be coming to the game I wouldn't mind seeing some Sith Troopers come for the First Order, or maybe even some new heroes that we could get, you know, depending on who's actually in the movie, because we don't really know that part yet. And maybe even new appearances, like we know that Emperor Palpatine is going to play some kind of role in this movie after watching the trailer. So maybe we can get skins for him, or skins for Finn, maybe even Rey, or maybe Poe can come to the game, like we don't really know yet. But this has all just got me very hyped for the future of Battlefront 2. They add that they can't go into exact specifics, but they can confirm that they will be adding a brand new planet and some kind of new reinforcement based on the conclusion of the galaxy spanning Skywalker saga. As it gets closer to December, in that time they'll come up with more news pertaining to that aspect of the update. But like they add the part of like the new planet, so I'm very excited to see after the movie comes out what actual planet they'll be adding to the game, as well as the reinforcements based on the conclusion of the galaxy spanning Skywalker saga. Now, moving away from Battlefront 2 as a game, the Rise of Skywalker movie is something I'm actually very, very looking forward to and something I'm very excited for to come in December. So seeing that they're very excited to add content from it has like gives me so much hope for this game. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it for all the news today. Let me know what you guys think of this update, what you really like about it, what you're kind of disappointed in, and what you think could come in the future of the Battlefront 2 down in the comments below. But that is it for the video today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, may the Force be with you.